500 logins is what it used to take in order to obtain the Zenith. Thankfully nowadays we can have it only after 100 logins and today we're going to be diving deeper into this primary weapon. As always my name is Lazar and I got a couple of builds laid out for you. Something cheap, something affordable that anybody can build but of course we also have the quote unquote end game setup with a ribbon. That being said though, please keep in mind that I like to take my time and explain a lot of the aspects that veteran players might already be used to. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Zenith. Let's begin by quickly taking a look at how the weapon handles without any mods equipped and for that we're gonna be needing a couple of guinea pigs. Now the Zenith has two fire modes, in primary fire mode it's your basic assault rifle affair. Nothing really special here outside of the, well the accuracy is kinda high 33 but if you take a look at how the bullets land, can you guys see that? Some of them are outside of the crossers and that's only 27 meters from my point so there is that to take into account. Now the Zenith has some magic about it, when you hit your secondary fire mode the magazine kind of ejects and you reload really really quickly and this thing kind of starts hovering over and you get a buff. If you take a look at my buff bar you got 30 seconds worth of that buff which will be putting red reticules around targets heads like so. Now the weapon is automatically changed to a semi firing mode, you got shot by shot action. But please take a look at my ammo, it consumes 5 ammo per shot and there is also one more thing which is very important. The that it now has infinite punch through and it's very easily to get headshots on target. So for example, again, as my secondary fire, the little thing is out, now I can headshot these guys through the wall, the Zenith having infinite punch through. But you should know there are certain walls that the Zenith can't penetrate. I'm talking about the uh, between tiles walls and so on and so forth. Now keep in mind that your secondary fire will only give you the buff for about 30 seconds and the targets will get the red reticule within 20 meters, so that's the range of the little magazine thing. And that's pretty much it as far as how the weapon functions. Now we're gonna be jumping into stats to take a closer look. Now this being a login weapon you don't need to worry about the Orokin Catalyst, this one will be coming pre-installed and the weapon also comes with a default dash or Naramon polarity. Now it's true, I over format my weapons quite a bit simply because I want to test all sorts of mod combinations so I'm able to present you guys with the best quote unquote, okay, quote unquote best builds. But for the weapon build I'm recommending you guys free format will be more than enough, simply add free V symbols or Madurai. Now in order to obtain the Zenith you need to log into Warframe 100 times, it used to be 500 logins but that was changed uh, rather recently so 100 logins and you will be presented with a choice you should go for the Zenith. The accuracy of the weapon is 33.3 both in primary and secondary fire mode so we're gonna be slapping on heavy caliber and a bit of multi shot so we can see exactly if the resulting accuracy is good enough or not. Of course this will be a tad subjective but once again 27 meters from the target with multi shot on the weapon you will see that only a few of the bullets are flying off the crosshairs. From my point of view it's worth it. If you don't have anything better than heavy caliber which is a pretty powerful mod at the end of the day it's okay to use. Now that said, the critical chance in primary fire mode is a tad underwhelming at only 10%. Pity because the critical multiplier is not bad. Thankfully, in secondary fire mode you got a critical chance of 35% with a whopping crit multi of 2.5x. It's pretty simple if you take a look at the weapon in primary fire mode, in automatic you got a status based weapon, in secondary fire mode you got a crit based weapon. Only 8% status chance in secondary but a whopping 34% in primary fire mode. Fire rate is solid for primary fire mode and a tad lackluster in secondary fire mode. You also got a faster reload on secondary fire mode 1.4 seconds instead of 1.6. The magazine is 90 across the board but the problem is that in secondary fire mode you are consuming 5 ammo per shot and you are doing 5 times the damage as well, value wise at least. So you are left with an effective magazine of 18 in secondary fire mode that is. I know it's a tad confusing but bear with me we're almost done. When it comes to the damage layout you will see that impact puncture and slash are present on both primary and secondary fire mode but with different layout. In primary fire mode you got slash which is the highest with a high status chance that means we're gonna be able to build this weapon into a status slash weapon. In secondary fire mode unfortunately puncture is the highest and puncture's proc is basically what the enemy is dealing less damage to you which can be useful but this is definitely not what most players are looking for. Then again puncture being the highest damage is not necessarily a bad thing because puncture deals extra damage to heavily armored targets, you know the targets that actually need to be dealt more damage to so bear that one in mind. 
Now with everything taken into account it can be rather difficult to make a build that will be taking advantage of both of the fire modes so let's see what kind of options we got. We're gonna be starting off with damage, serration and heavy caliber. Next the multi shot, the best thing on everything with split chamber and vigilante armaments. This one is optional entirely up to you but I still think that multi shot on 95% of the weapons is basically the best stat you can have. Next we're gonna go to critical chance and critical damage for the secondary fire mode mostly because in primary fire mode even with point strike equip we're looking at a critical chance of only 25% and of course critical damage with vital sense 4.4x crit multi in primary but more importantly 5.5x in secondary fire mode. Now we're gonna pause for just a second because you can't really build the zenith in such a way that the build takes advantage of both of the fire modes. For example in primary fire mode I would renounce crit entirely but then again it's mandatory in secondary fire mode. Mm. It's not ideal but let's give it a go anyway. When it comes to primary fire mode you do have that high slash value with a high status chance so therefore going for a slash based build for the weapons innate status chance would be a pretty good idea, right? So let's give it a go and see how it works. We're gonna be building vital damage together with the 60-60 mods. You wanna go for the 60-60 mods not the 90 mods simply because a higher status chance will mean first and foremost more slashes on the target. Toxin, Malignant Force and of course Rhyme Rounds and we got a 96.8% status chance with Slash being the highest as a proc value. Keeping in mind that IPS, Impact, Puncture and Slash has a 4 times greater chance at proccing over elemental types such as Viral. The thing about Viral is that you don't need a thousand procs for it to be good. You just need 1-2 good ones to reduce the maximum health of your target and then let the Slashes deal the damage. Now this build is made for primary fire mode mostly so we can take advantage of that Slash and I'm gonna hit this target till about 50% HP then watch the slashes deal the damage. There are two problems here. One, it takes a whole lot of bullets to kill a level 120 corrupted heavy gunners and second of all the value of the slashes are simply not all that high. Take a look at that. What at 45? 45 would be the value of a normal white hit on a slash. You got about 200 on a crit, a yellow crit and you get lucky you get an orange crit on the target you can get a slash value for up to 800. A build such as this does work, it's doing what it's supposed to, it's applying a lot of slashes to the target in combination with the vital effect but from my point of view it's simply not all that potent. If I was to switch to secondary fire mode I'm gonna be doing a whole lot more damage shot per shot but I'm never gonna proc slash simply because puncture is way out there as a value so I'm gonna be proccing a whole lot of puncture but not slash unless I go for hunter munitions but more on that just a tad later. What if I drop the whole idea of proccing slash together with viral and I go for corrosive? After all, I'm shooting corrupted heavy gunners, yes? So corrosive damage would be the ideal way to go. So let's test it out and see if we get better results. We're gonna go again with toxin and electricity. Unfortunately, if the IPS rules worked in my favor before because I didn't want a thousand vital procs, I do want a thousand corrosive procs. So what I can do is drop something like heavy caliber and go even more into corrosive with infected clip or stormbringer. It doesn't really matter which of the two, the result will be identical. 414.8 corrosive which is a lot, unfortunately not enough to be proc priority number one but it is within striking distance of slash and going for nine, another 90 mod at this point would be mostly wasteful. So we're gonna test the weapon out like this, of course you can keep your heavy caliber on and exchange it for something like vigilante armaments as well. We're gonna go automatic on the right and semi-auto on the left and of course a corrosive base build against corrupted heavy gunners will be working a whole lot more efficiently. Now this is the primary reason I always preach, keep in mind where you're going, who you're fighting and build your elemental combos accordingly because targets have vulnerabilities and resistances to damage. However, Slash and Viral is a whole lot more flexible, it will do decently well in a, uh, a lot more situations than something like Corrosive. As for semi, again I have my uh, corrosive damage on so I'm gonna be able to absolutely murder these high level targets and I love that infinite punch rule on the weapon, by all intents and purposes it is absolutely glorious. Now speaking of the secondary fire mode it's obvious what it is, it's a critical chance weapon so for critical chance builds we gotta go with hunter munitions and this is what we're gonna be doing next. If you guys want the most amount of damage and that's the only thing you care about, why, how do I get the most amount of damage out of the zenith, you gotta go for a alternative fire build for Critical Chance, Hunter Munitions, Argon Scope and Bladed Rounds. And again you have the option for Heavy Cal instead of Vigilante Armaments. I kinda tend to use the Zenith as somewhat of a sniper when I go secondary fire mode so I don't like the accuracy penalty on Heavy Cal but again that's entirely up to you. Level 120 Corrupted Heavy Gunners one more time and again exclusively for the secondary fire mode this time. 
Now take a look at the value of the bleeds even without the buff from bladed rounds. Absolutely bloody beautiful and you're able to tear through high level targets like a hot knife through butter. Honestly the weapon can be immensely powerful with a build such as this. The problem is it's a bit limited. For example you are tied into that buff when, when it runs out it can be a bit annoying. Be oh wow that was just awesome. You gotta put down your wheel of death of doom and then you can go behind the wall for example and stay safe over here while you completely murder your targets. That's totally an option when it comes to higher level content when the targets actually do hurt so bear that one in mind. But again for the Zenith a critical chance bleed build is the way to go for the most amount of damage. It's not necessarily the most fun but then again fun is subjective and speaking of subjective Rivens for the Zenith. If you want to go for the secondary fire mode like I like to go for the secondary fire mode, you want to get a Riven with critical chance, critical damage, multi-shot, that would be ideal and of course try to get a decent negative as well. A Riven that will be taking advantage of both primary and secondary fire modes would be something like multi-shot and damage with a harmless negative. Now this is the best one I got, it's got multi-shot, damage, toxin and minus damage to infested and of course I adapted my build to it. It's still gonna be for secondary fire mode which is why I have rhyme rounds in the hope that I'm gonna be getting just a couple of vital slashes, uh, vital procs so I can make the most out of my slashes. Now let's see what kind of a difference we can get out of a dispo free riven and to be honest I wanted the critical chance critical damage multi-shot roll but there you go it was simply not meant to be. Dispo 3 however does still carry quite a bit of weight and the weapon can now tear through high level targets in just a matter of seconds and that infinite punch through is what the Zenith is all about, it's what the Zenith is known for so I highly recommend you when you get this weapon do try to pick up a Riven, you're looking at 40 plat maybe 50 plat unrolled, head on over to Kuva and see if you get lucky. And if that was still not enough for you you can take it even further with Warframe buffs, maybe with Chroma for example or my favorite weapon specialist Lady Mirage Prime. As for buffs you can go for something like Rifle Lamp which will get you 27% extra damage to your primary weapons but considering the output power of the Zenith I hardly think this is worth it. I would encourage you to use your commodity aura, maybe your energy siphon, corrosive projection, growing power and so on and so forth. Arcanes however are a lot more impactful, usually I try to keep one defensive arcane and one offensive arcane, but arcane rage r3 will get you a 10% chance for plus 120% damage to primary weapons for 16 seconds. You can pay 100 something plat from the trade chat on PC or you can farm it from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. Arcane Avenger from my point of view is one of the most powerful offensive arcanes in the game. On damage you got a 14% chance for 30% critical chance boost bonus additive after for 8 seconds. Now the beauty of this one is that it's a bonus additive after so it stacks on top of what you already have but not only that this one applies to your primary, secondary, melee, even your arc gun so it's uh, one of the most flexible arcanes as well. Alright we're gonna be spawning in the same targets one more time. And this time we're gonna be unpausing the AI so they can hit me and I can get me buffs. Her third ability for a massive damage increase as well as the lovely clones. And now Mirage can one shot high level targets without much issue. Because once again the Zenith does carry a whole lot of weight behind its shots. Take a look at that. My one problem with the weapon is that primary fire mode is simply lackluster. It's an automatic rifle that doesn't really carry all that much humph. But when you go to secondary fire mode that's when you get your damage and that's when you get that fantastic... Uh, infinite punch through. Once again I think the weapon is 100% worth building. My only disappointment is in that primary fire mode. If they could have done something special to it like they did to the secondary fire mode that would have been fantastic. It doesn't need to be powerful. We got plenty of power in Warframe. More than we need. We just need some cool gimmicks. You know something that says hey I want to use this because it does this. Not just because it deals a whole lot of damage. And that's pretty much it for the Zenith review. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. If you got any feedback for me, then by all means, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below if you want to request a specific weapon review or versus. Now in all honesty, I can't exactly promise you that it will be done by next time or even within a week, but I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.